Cat people, panthers in disguise. That's a corny joke even for you, Doc. When I first watched this film many full moons ago, I must confess, I was a tad disappointed. I heard the title Cat People and jumped right in, expecting something akin to the Island of Lost Souls. Alas, there were no campy furry face masks to be found. No, no. Little were we to know. That particular horror was being saved for a later date. Cat People is not your usual monster movie of its time. As the story goes, a studio boss ordered a team to construct a film based around the silly title alone. Fighting against the grain, they consciously came up with a more subtle concept. No big makeup jobs, no castles, graveyards, or cornball antics. They went a little more classy, but what would you expect from RKO? The same studio that gave us Citizen Kane, King Kong, and Randy Orton's signature move. So, what is Cat People about then? A man and a woman have a meet cute at the zoo, involving a scrap of paper and a bin. They meet, and it's cute. Undeterred by her obsession with cats and her rather peculiar family history, he marries her. However, she laments that she cannot truly serve as his wife. Truly, if you catch her Tokyo Drift. If she so much as kisses him, she believes her cat people DNA will be triggered and she will murder him dead. The man is all like Zoinks, and after a serious case of the bluest bulls, he falls in love with his feistier, less cat-obsessed colleague. Jealousy and sexual repression turn the feline fiend crazy, and she embarks on a journey to stalk and hunt her husband's new love interest, leading to great scenes of horror. The real stars of Cat People are not the two leads, but the director and the cinematographer. The film is frequently gorgeous to look at, which is useful during some of the drawn-out dialogue scenes. Every flame is seeped in darkness and shadow. Cat people can sit very comfortably among the noir genre of the 1940s, not just visually, but also in its themes of the other dangerous woman, the femme fatale. The suspense scenes rival many noir thrillers too. When the stalked girl goes for a lonely late night swim and starts to feel in danger, the dark swirling reflections of the water and deeply reverberating audio is gripping. Another similar moment involves a scared couple being ambushed at work by a panther. Of course, whenever cat people is discussed, the film's most famous horror moment is always brought into the conversation. The setup is simple. The new lover is followed down an empty street at night. It is the film's first outright horror scene as well, which makes it all the more effective to begin with. The editing between the click clacking heels moving in and out of the streetlight spotlights was already notable, while the soundtrack grinds to a silent halt, and then... The jump scare fake out, which is ironically so often a cat, is now a bit overdone. In 1942, though, it was pretty effective, and honestly, very realistic. If I had a quid for every time a passing bus had scared the living fuck out of me with a random loud hiss, I'd be able to fund my own mid budget film about cursed cat ladies. The fake jump scare technique became known as the Luton Bus, named after the film's producer, who proceeded to reuse the trick in several subsequent productions. I am very glad I gave the film a second chance, because there is a lot to like here. Visually, it's wonderful of course. The skirting around taboo themes such as sexual repression and suicide is engaging. Witnessing this guy's decision to buy a girl an unwanted pet cat after just one date is quite bewildering. And maybe it says more about my mental state than anything else, but the death of the spool pet canary left me genuinely affected. Certainly more so than the deaths of any of these humans in these bloody films. Cat People was financially successful enough to warrant a sequel in 1944, Curse of the Cat People. It's mostly unrelated, however. And that was it for the would-be series until Paul Schrader's remake in 1982. But that is for the best. If the concept really was conceived as an antidote to the other Big Five Studios' horror outputs, it would have been a shame to see it follow their franchising footsteps. <laughs>